Hello. Today we are going to cover the basics of a technique used to make thin sections of plant material by hand using a razor blade. The goal of making thin sections is to create sections that are one to two cells in thickness and that are not at an oblique angle. The sections created can be viewed with a compound microscope to observe cell structure. Let's get started. First, let's start with a demonstration of the technique on a large scale. Here, the razor blade is represented by the cardboard. A plant stem is represented by the black hose. Thin sections of the stem are created by cutting at a perpendicular angle to the long axis of the stem. After laying the stem on the microscope slide, position your finger upright on top of the stem at a 90 degree angle to the stem. The first step is to cut off the end of the stem at a 90 degree angle so that the cut is flush with your finger. Push the end away. Now you can begin making sections. To cut sections, chop in an up and down motion that is perpendicular to the long axis of the stem. As you chop, gradually put pressure toward your finger to slowly give the razor blade access to more stem. Your finger should slowly roll back to expose more plant material all while keeping the razor blade perpendicular. Let's go to a real plant example, here a moss. Mosses can be dried and rehydrated without damaging cell structure. Plant material needs to be wet in order to make sections. Here we take a dry moss and rehydrate it by putting it in water. Next, put a wet moss plant on a microscope slide using forceps. Add a drop or two of water to keep the plant wet. Put the slide under the dissecting scope to cut the sections. Cut the sections while looking through the oculars of the scope. Let's start by making stem cross sections. Using a new razor blade, cut the end of the stem at a 90 degree angle to the long axis of the stem. Push away the unwanted material. Chop up and down at a 90 degree angle by putting pressure against your finger. Do not saw. Let's continue making more sections. Note that the up and down motion is very slight and that the blade is not moving back very far. After cutting sections, push the sections away into a drop of water. If the sections stick to the razor blade, gently push them off into the water with forceps. Make sure that you have many sections created from which to choose. Next, spread out the sections in water. Some of the sections will be too thick and some will be only partial sections, but you only need a thin section of a portion to view cell structure. Once the sections are spread out, remove any thick pieces of tissue with forceps. The thicker sections are those that are darker. Removing unwanted material allows the cover slip to lay flatter on top of the sections and to reduce the amount of material so that there is less chance of one section covering another. Let's view the sectioning process again closer and at a different angle. Cut off the end of the stem to make a perpendicular. Then chop up and down in a perpendicular manner while putting pressure against your finger. Push the sections into a drop of water. Again, chop up and down by putting pressure against your finger. Push the sections into water. Now spread out the sections in the water. Note that some of the sections are too thick and are darker. Remove any thick pieces of tissue with forceps.
Once unwanted material is removed and the sections are spread out in the water, a cover slip can be laid on top of the sections to create a wet mount. The cover slip should be dropped from one side at an angle. Add more water if water is not covering the entire area beneath the cover slip. Water is added by touching the tip of the water bottle to a side of the cover slip and then gently squeezing the bottle, letting the water flow underneath the cover slip. Next, let's learn how to make cross sections of leaves. The procedure is similar to that we saw for the stem cross sections. Place the material in a drop or two of water on a microscope slide. You will want to orient the leaves as parallel as possible to each other as is feasible, so that as many leaves as is possible will be sectioned perpendicular to the long dimension of the leaves. To orient the leaves in the same direction, observe through the oculars of the dissecting scope and place your finger upright to hold the plant and the leaves in position. Use the flat side of a razor blade or your forceps to push the leaves parallel to each other. Cut off the ends of the leaves to create ends that are perpendicular. Chop up and down while putting pressure on your finger. Push the sections into water. You want to get as many sections as is possible from which to choose. Again, chop up and down, push the sections into water. Or push them off of the razor blade into the water with forceps. Add more water if necessary. Spread the sections in the water. Remove the thick sections. The dark rectangular pieces are thick sections that are floating with the leaf surface facing upward. Whereas the lighter triangular sections are floating so that the cross section cells are facing upward. Once the unwanted material is removed and the sections are spread out, make a wet mount by dropping a cover slip from an angle onto the sections. Add water beneath the cover slip. Let's view the process again closer and at a different angle. Orient the leaves in the same direction. Cut off the ends of the leaves to create perpendicular ends. Chop up and down while putting pressure against your finger. Push the sections into water. You want to get as many sections as is possible from which to choose. Continue chopping up and down and pushing sections into water until you have the number of sections that you want. Push sections off of the razor blade if needed. Spread the sections in the water. Remove the thick sections. Under the dissecting microscope, it is possible to magnify 40 times. As you do, it is possible to see thicker sections and those sections that are not oriented correctly. The dark rectangular pieces are sections that are too thick and oriented with the leaf surface upward. We want to look at the triangular sections. The triangular sections are oriented so that the cut surface is facing upward. Of the triangular sections, we want those that are lighter in color. Make a wet mount 
by dropping a cover slip from an angle onto the sections. Add water beneath the cover slip. Sometimes air bubbles become trapped under the cover slip. Note the pair of round air bubbles in the center of the view. Later we will see what air bubbles look like with the compound scope. We are now ready to look at our sections with the compound scope. To view the sections with the compound scope, first make sure that the 40 times power objective is in place and then place the slide on the stage of the microscope. The focus knobs are on the side of the scope. The fine focus is the smaller of the two knobs. To move the stage, use the two dials on the knob beneath the stage. In a stem viewed with the compound microscope, the position of different cell types is visible, as is cell structure. To see the details of cells, focus up and down slowly. Sometimes whole sections are not obtained, or an edge of a section is thinner and shows more detail. The partial stem section viewed here shows cells one cell layer thick in the center portion of the stem or the upper part of the view. A thin section of the midrib of the leaf is seen here. Again, note that not all of the leaf is perfectly sectioned, but cell details are still visible. Air bubbles are distinct under the compound microscope. They are round and have very thick black outlines. Thin sectioning by hand is a skill that requires patience and practice, but can be very satisfying once mastered and results in opening up the world of plant cell structure. The techniques shown here are only one of many ways of creating hand thin sections. Start by trying sectioning as shown here, but modify the technique to suit your style.